Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So we've been doing a lot of line boring lately. Uh, a lot of people have been asking a lot of questions about uh, setups, tooling, stuff like that that we use. Uh, so tonight's going to be one of those videos where we go through and give you a rundown on some of the tools we use for our line boring and bore welding system. So of the tooling and bits and pieces we use, half of it is shop made or shop modified. Shop made, shop made, shop made, shop made, bought, shop modified. Um, shop modified, supplied with line borers and line boring machines. Right, so we've got three different methods of setting up the boring bar in an, into an eye. Uh, we have our centering cones in a couple of different sizes. We also have our shop made centering plugs. And then we've got the standard Sir, Sir Mechanica centering system, which is three, three bolts and a piece of pipe. Our centering cones that we use, uh, they're really only usable when the bores are in really good shape in really good condition or it's not super critical how they're aligned uh, so they're a pretty easy thing to set up Our shop made centering plugs however, they are for when the eyes are in really good shape. We have these in all different uh, shapes and sizes for most Kat and Komatsu equipment. So when we make these centering plugs, they just start out as a bit of steel plate or aluminium plate. I'll bore a 40mm hole in it, ream that to size, machine the outside to the actual size of the bored eye on completion and then we just cut them in half with a saw. So nice, quick and easy to set up only usable when the eyes are in really good shape. Uh, if it's totally destroyed, you'll have to go back through the other methods and um, center it up another way. The Sir Mechanica centering system, they are mainly designed for some of those really, really bad bores, or that's all we actually really use them for. They are quite fiddly, but you know, when you haven't got many other options, that's sort of the best thing you're gonna go to. So the way the standard Sir Mechanica centering system is used is you tack on the three bolts, and then you stick the piece of pipe in the middle of them, that piece of pipe then accepts your boring bar. You can then use that and the three bolts to adjust the bar into the center of the eye. And then you can set your bearing blocks up from there. So these are our preferred style of inserts we use. We haven't found anything else on the market that comes close to as good a performance as the uh, pressed and ground inserts. We run ECGT inserts. These are a pressed and ground insert. We have these in left hand as well. Longer bars, shorter bars, whatever we sort of need. These are a 12 mil bar. Fits in the bar nice and easy. And just a grub screw to lock that in place. Some of the other inserts we use are a CCGT insert. These are a little bit larger than our standard ECGTs. These are for a bit more heavy cut stuff like that. We have them in a left hand tool, tool holder. We also have them in a neutral holder as well for doing chamfering. Uh, pretty good robust insert for what we do. Uh, the ECGTs are a great insert. The CCGTs are a great insert. The standard pressed insert in the ECMT, which is the same shape, but it's a pressed insert, not a ground. Uh, they're pretty useless. They're good for interrupted cuts and uh, being pretty nasty with them. But as it goes for you know, overall cutting and finish, the pressed and ground inserts are by far the best, which are the ECGTs. All right, so this is our shop made tool extension uh, clamp. This was just a piece of solid bar I had. Um, I've used a chain link to join the two pieces. So I can run a 12 mil tool in this side and a 10 mil tool in that side. Uh, that was made one night after the standard Sir, Sir Mechanica one failed. Being that it is steel, it takes a lot more punishment. It's very easy to get on and off the bar. Uh, it's just one, one bolt straight through, tighten it on and it's done.
by far 10 times more robust than the standard one you buy with, with the machine. I made this in the first month of owning the Sir Mechanica machine, um, as I found the standard one just wasn't up to the task. Right, I go, so we're going to explain this snap gauge for everyone. Everyone seems to ask the question about how we measure these out. It's a spring-loaded gauge, you undo the little bolt and the, the anvil flies out. You've got a hardened ball on one end, hardened ball on the other end. So it's pretty simple. Just slip it into the bar, feed the bar back into the, into the bore you're trying to measure. Undo, your, undo the little screw there, let the snap gauge come out. Just give it a bit of a wiggle, make sure it's found central. Tighten it back up and run it back out of the bore. Then it's as simple as just measuring the gauge, working out how much you need to remove to fit your bush, and then you advance the tool. We've got two styles of snap gauges here. This brass one is actually the standard Sir Mechanica snap gauge. They come in a heaps of different screw-in sizes. You can make them as short or as long as you want. The ends are even removed. You need to do something with them. They're a standard Sir, Sir Mechanica part. That's actually a 10 mil, in, uh, a 10 mil snap gauge. The other one I use is this steel one here. This is a 12, 12 mil snap gauge. This is actually an Elsa brand line boring machine snap, snap gauge. Uh, by far, in my opinion, 100% better than the brass. Being that the Sir, Sir Mechanica bars standard have a 10 mil tool holder in them, you do need to make your own bars if you want to run something from, from the Elsa machine as they are all a 12 mil tool, tool holder and snap gauges and stuff like that. Righto, so we've measured the bore. We're going to use a dial gauge now to advance the tool. Uh, very important to get this right. And it's that easy to advance your tool. This isn't the general way we would actually do it. We do have a proper tool that actually fits in the bar with a post that comes over the top to touch down on top of the tool. At the moment, we're a little bit tight for clearance in here, so we can't use it. So sometimes you've got to go back to just a standard mag-based dial indicator. This is the dial gauge you use for measuring and advancing your tool. They come with a 10 mil shank. I've made one to suit a 12 mil as well, as all my bar work suits a 12 mil tool holder. So this one comes with the kit as you see it here. You can actually unscrew the end of the dial gauge. There we go. And there is actually another little fitting to go on the end of here. That's just an extension to get it down past something or depending what you're doing, you might need to remove it or put it on. Because I don't run a 10 mil bar anymore, I've made my own bars and all my drive bars have a 12 mil hole in them. That's why I have a 12 mil holder for my dial indicator and a 12 mil snap gauge. I do still have one bar that has 10 mil holes in it. That was the first bar I ever made. Uh, but since then I've made a couple of new bars and we've gone to 12 mil everything. So the reason I made my own bars for the Sir Mechanica machine is the bar work that was supplied with it was um, incorrect, it wasn't right. We had a lot of dramas with it. Uh, that'll be coming up in a later video on the review of the Sir Mechanica machine where I'll show you exactly what the problem was. We didn't get a great deal of help out of the supplier that sold us the, the machine. So rather than deal with them ever again, I made all my own bars for the machine. Alright, so this is the standard facing head that you buy with the Sir Mechanica line boring machine. Um, as you can see, it is a very large piece of equipment. These are extremely expensive. Um, I've used this, I think, twice for facing off a bucket. Uh, they do say you can use these for cutting a snap ring groove, but I, I don't see how you're going to fit that inside your bearing housings once you've set the machine up. Uh, the way these work is they're locked by a bolt through that hole onto the shaft. 
and then as the machine is spinning, you've got your tool hanging out here, you engage this lever here and it starts to wind the head out to do the facing or you can spin it around and face in. Um, as you can see, they're very big, they're very heavy and they're just not very user friendly when it comes to doing snap ring grooves or anything like that. The first job we used it on was a, was a 988 loader bucket and we didn't have a great deal of room to put this inside the two ears and do the facing. We, we did get it done, but it was very, very testing. So in the meantime, this facing head will work where we can fit it. Um, other than that, we just do it our standard way with our standard tools, just advancing the tool, which we've shown in other videos. Righto, so a lot of people have commented on this particular device here, uh, what we use it for. This is actually for a milling machine. This one's an automatic boring and facing head. We actually use it on our line bore for cutting snap ring grooves. Um, I made the bar just a piece of 40 mil with a five mil key cut, cut through it. I then adapted an R8 arbor. I machined it down, machined the bar down for that to fit inside. There is actually a bolt that holds that, that, uh, that flange there into the bar. And then we just bolt the vertex boring and facing head to that. Um, this is by far 100% better than the standard facing head or well, snap ring cutter that Sir Mechanic has supplied with the machine. Um, you know, this is, you know, it's the size of my hand. So this can also be used in a milling machine for doing snap ring grooves, boring, facing, tapering, so on and so forth. But I've adapted this for cutting snap ring grooves for our line boring machine. So these facing heads are designed with three speeds in them. While the bar is spinning, all you do is you put a peg or a Allen key or something in there. When you hold that, it will start to advance the head to make the cut for the snap ring groove. There are three speeds here. We generally run it on the slowest speed, which is number two. This is part of our welding system for our line boring machine. As it goes for consumables, we've converted all of our other machines in the workshop to the Bernard Centerfire uh, consumables. So that's just a Bernard Centerfire diffuser that I have silver soldered onto a gooseneck. That one too is aftermarket, that's, that's not part of the, the kit you get from Sir Mechanica. They run the heavy duty nozzles and the heavy duty tips. We tend to run that on everything, so everything's been modified for the line borer to run the Bernard stuff. As it's heavy duty, they're cheaper than the standard and factory consumables for the Sir, Sir Mechanica machines. Value for money, the Sir Mechanica stuff isn't there, so that's why we converted everything over to uh, Bernard. So the Y we use, it's a BOC brand. It's a ER70S6, but it's a bronze coated uh, 0.9Y or 0.35. Gas combination is a 75% argon, 10 to 20% CO2 and 5% oxygen. And we usually run that at about 19 volts and about four and a half meters a minute. goes for anti spatter sprays and tip dips we do use a uh, it's a heat paint for headers on cars uh, it's actually a ceramic paint the process to do that stuff properly is you know quite extensive you got to preheat paint it post heat preheat again paint it again so all we do is we'll just do a single pass and then we'll uh, we'll spray a bit of that around the shroud it just stops all the spatter sticking inside to the tip and the shroud and it just makes for trouble free welding for the rest of the job Righto guys, that's just a bit of a rundown of the uh, accessories and tooling we use for our line boring machine. So if you've got any questions about our shop made tools, comment below and we'll try to answer them. And uh, thanks for watching.
line boring and our bore welding systems. Um, system. System. Line boring system. Bore welding system. <laughs> yep. Do that again. <laughs> Which bit? The one word thing. Right. So tonight's going to be a bit of a rundown on our line boring and bore welding systems. <laughs> systems. <laughs> System. It's system. one machine. For our line boring and bore welding system. <laughs> or 035. Oh, 0.35. Whatever. No, it didn't work either. Mm. So the reason I went to and made my... Uh, so... Wait, what was I saying? I don't know what I'm fucking doing. The, oh, fuck. See, this is... It's, they, there's not overly... Oh, fuck, I'm over it. This is our preferred range of inserts. No, fucking stop. <laughs> Shit ass. Right on. Hang on, get good. Well, well, am I looking at you or do you not? It's hard to explain. Okay. Right, so. So this dial gauge here is the um, is the fuck. So this is just a piece of hollow bar. Oh shit. It's a real pain in the ass to use. <laughs> fuck. And now it's broken. Don't drop them, like I just did, because I bent the little screw. Still works. Still works, we're good. You know, it's the size of my hand. Uh, the other one's about the size of a 44 gallon drum. <laughs> it fucking is. Look at the size of the fucking thing. You can see it is very fucking big. I don't know. You just gotta wing it. So. Let's show you what it, show you some of the stuff. Righto, so we're gonna stop fucking around and show you a bit more of uh, show you some of the stuff we use. <laughs> uh, if you've got any questions, uh, just keep them to yourselves. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>